thousands of strains, 300 plus active of this human papillomavirus. And then it's killing the girls in mass now. It's like a test. We can give it to you. It kills you. And then we don't even get in trouble. And get rid of the breeders. Yeah, they're targeting our little girls. Just like, well, I mean, <laughs> folks, I, I just can't handle it anymore. Bob, let's continue along this line, then into the economy. But I hope it made sense for everybody, and I, and I want Bob to comment on this. The, 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 the flu isn't killing anybody, but they're saying they're getting ready to forcibly inject us. I mean, how obvious is this? And they admit the shot doesn't even protect you from it. Bob Chapman, I know I'm almost hyperventilating on this subject, but it's, it's so obvious to me and everybody else, but I guess not the general public. The regular flu kills 37,000. When there are normal deaths this winter, if there are a couple thousand deaths, they're going to act like it's the end of the world, forced inoculations. The perfect cover for Obama to get all his police state measures through Congress, his carbon taxes, his new bank of the world, where this new bank will rule the, the United States. I mean, they're openly announcing it. Do you see them using this flu or thinking about using it? as a cover, as the stage crises they need? Uh, there's a good possibility of that because they could use it as a stepping stone. And um, that stepping stone is very strong. And uh, I, I believe that uh, probably the next thing that would happen after that perhaps would be an extension of warfare, perhaps in the Middle East, um, a, uh, a situation with the dollar, uh, where others don't want to take it because it's fallen, uh, which could bring on a bank holiday. There's a whole combination of things that they're working on here that you and I have to back into and others like us because we're not on the inside. We don't know exactly what we're going. We have to look at the history of what they've done and the history of history, and then we have to back into what we think they're going to do. But there's no question this is part and parcel of something much bigger. And it's not just us saying this. Michael Savage, Limbaugh, they're all saying Obama may stage a crisis, economic, military, or in the case of Savage, and he's like the third biggest host in the country, he's saying stage a terror attack. If guys at that level have been given the green light to talk about this, that means some major people, even in the system, are concerned about it. I mean, I don't see Obama being able to continue what he's doing without a stage crisis or group uh, of crises, but because we've exposed government stage crises and terror, the Hegelian dialectic of problem, reaction, solution, creating crises, then offering the solution, I don't see them getting away with it. But I also don't see them continuing their operation without it. I mean, the Gallup poll is out. Obama is now the lowest, the, the fastest drop of any president ever, now beating even Jimmy Carter. Well, and that says a mouthful as well. And, uh, and that's true. Uh, I think the approval rating I last saw at uh, Rasmussen was around a 44, and I haven't seen it in the news po new polls over the last week. But, uh, yes, they're trying to get as much accomplished as quickly as possible because I think that, and you do as well, uh, from the polls, that, with, and I said this in January, that Obama would be 40, by September, October, in his approval rating. You did. You're and right he's again, not Bob. not going to get anything passed. You're right again. How did you, at the peak of the Obama worship, know he was going to fall like a shooting star? Because, you know, the bigger the hype, the more the empty promises, the faster it deflates. Well, the reason I thought so was, in, 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 and you, you saw the same thing I did, uh, he is a, a pupil of Zbigniew Brzezinski. And that's just one faction of, say, two major factions within the Illuminists that run things. And when we saw Goldman Sachs and J.P. Morgan Chase and Citigroup and all of those companies giving these humongous amounts of money to the, uh, the, the Democratic group and as well as uh, Mr. Obama's campaign, we're talking, you know, millions of dollars, we knew then that he was going to be controlled by this group. And being controlled by the group means he's going to do exactly what they tell him to do. I don't think that he has anything to say about anything, much less what oh, maybe a little bit. 
but much less than George Bush had. I mean, they just, you look at the teleprompter, and that's it. Well, Bob, I agree with you, I'm, especially when I saw Clinton operative Stephanopoulos a few weeks ago tearing into Axelrod, his counterpart. That was the same position he held, saying, well, Obama lied about not raising taxes. He's raising it on everybody. And Axelrod saying, we never promised to not raise taxes. And then Stephanopoulos playing clips. They're meant now to blame it all on Obama like he's really the one running the show. Then they'll just give us a new puppet. I mean, this is so predictable. How do we get the public to look past Bush and Obama and these puppets to Paulson and Bernanke and Geithner and the Rothschilds and the Rockefellers? Well, that's starting to happen. So we'll talk about that, the economy, where you see all this going, and calls straight ahead. Infowars.com.